right, good morning. Welcome to Take Heart. Uh, I can't see you, but good to have you here. Um, we want to we wanna enjoy God's Word today. And uh, before we even start the devotion, I really want to tell our folks that we miss you. Um, personally, I miss you. I, it's amazing the, the value of a, of a hug or, or, or just fellowship or uh, seeing the kids run around and, and, and the tweens play. And uh, guys, I, I, gotta, I gotta confess that, that things are different. And um, I just want you guys to know that, that I'm longing to, to see you guys again. I can't wait to, to fellowship, to eat, to hang out and, and just share God's word together again. But things are different, right? Walmart's different. Uh, the grocery store is different. Everywhere you go, you got people wearing masks, and it, it's something out of a, almost a movie. And um, I want to address that today. I want to I want to talk about um, you know some of your concerns and and some of the things that may be on your mind because because uh, that's what we do. Okay, so we've got different things going on in the world. We got different rules. Uh, you know, you used to just be able to go to a go to the bank or, or go somewhere and stand next to somebody in line now we're, now we're worried about being six feet away we're worried about washing our hands before we touch our kids where um even the shopping the shopping cart you're like do you need a mask to go to the to the to the grocery store or, or who wipes down the shopping cart now all those things are different and and with those differences um we've got different concerns um you know we got small concerns whether um do I go to work today? We've got bigger concerns of, you know, am I sick? Do I have a family family member that's sick or someone who's ill in the family that are that can cause us to worry? And with all these changes and these new rules, I mean, it could be tough. It could be tough. Um, these these new rules and these restrictions they, they they can get us distracted and we can focus on what's going on around us and it can really get our walk away. Right? Our walk can really can start to, to flounder some. And um, I've got that verse, right, that everybody's, that everybody's read. It's James. It says, uh, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testings of your faith produces patience. If you haven't heard that in the last three or four weeks, you are really doing a good job at social distancing, right? You have not been around. And I'm telling you, um, I want to be honest with you guys. I wasn't there. I've got to confess, right? Um, I spent a lot of time here. I love you guys, and it affected me a lot. You know, I was um, kind of sitting to myself and saying, "What's going on?" And as I began to look at the world around me and kind of fall into the trap, I really believed that I forgot to, got, to guard my circumspection, right? The, the the careful way of my walk kind of got away from me. Um, I'm reminded of uh, Ephesians 5.15. It says this, I want to read it to you just in case you're in that same sp space. If, you're in the, in, if your walk has floundered a little bit, I think it's important that we look at verses like this. Ephesians says this, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, and that means carefully, noting your position, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand the will of God. Um, I got to confess that my walk had become foolish, right? I started to stumble just a little bit, and I had to really sit back. And then after some, some exhortation from my brothers here at the church, um, from my actual brother, some encouragement from my wife and, and, and from my mom, um, I began to pray. I began to sit back and say, well, Lord, what's going on? Um, Psalms 139 comes to mind and says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And today I think it's pretty common to have anxieties, right? Ask the Lord to know them for you. He knows them, but you need to, you need to ask him to understand it. Open yourself up to him. It says, verse 24 says, And see if there is any wicked way in me, right? Um, maybe some of you are out there, you're in that place where you've not been coming to church, you haven't had that group support that, that's normal, it might be time to, to check, recheck, and then reset yourself. So, in my prayers, I'm in a funk, and two passages came to my mind. So the Lord started reminding me of, 
of how simple his walk is, right? Our walk is not very difficult. So the first verse, you've heard this before, but I want to remind you, Matthew 11:28 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Our Lord gives rest, right? And, and maybe you guys are getting some rest because you're at home, but he gives rest to the soul. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and, I, and you will find rest for your souls. Sometimes we just need to hear that. Um, some of you have, have burdens that you put on yourself. Other of you have burdens from your job, your family. Um, but Jesus gives rest. And our walk is simple. We've got a lot of new rules. We've got a lot of new places where we can't go. But God hasn't called us to, to confusion or, or to stress, but he's called us to love him and walk in and rest. So what do we do? Matthew uh, 20, 22, 36, and 34. Excuse me. Matthew 22, 36, and 40. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm running through my Bible, and I'm looking. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And so I, I, I get to Matthew 22, and I said, wow, is it really that simple? So let me read it to you. So this, the, the scribe asks Jesus, he says, Teacher, which is, the greatest, which, is, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Guys, there's only two things to do. The news, I mean, there's a body count on the news every day. Right, you've got to wash your hands before you touch the door. You've got to, you've got to stand, if, if you're working, if you're able to work, and if you're not able to work, you probably stand in the house. But God has only called us to do two things. Now, let's take a look at them. The first is actually the golden rule. I want to make sure that we don't have any uh, misconceptions about that. A lot of people think the second commandment is the golden rule, but I, I must submit to you that the first is the golden rule. And let's look at it again, it says, Jesus said to him, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Mark's gospel says, with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. How do we do that? If you're wondering, I made some steps. Step number one, in order to do this, you got to know who God is. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Um, Jesus says it much more bluntly in John uh, chapter 8, 24. He says, therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Who is he really? I made a list. Let me read it to you. He's Lord God Almighty. He's God Most High. He's Lord Master, Lord Jehovah. He's your banner, your shepherd. He's your healer. He is there. He's the Lord that is righteous. He sanctifies you. He's your everlasting God. He's your provider. He's your peace. And he's your host. But he's more. He's, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the mighty God, the Prince of Priests. He's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Most importantly, guys, you can say all of that, but he's got to be your friend. You have to have a relationship with God. And when you have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, that can put your mind at ease. That can, that can set you down. So my question to you, how often are you talking to Jesus? Right? These names that I just read, they, you read them in the Bible, but most of the time we read over them. They're more apparent when you're calling out to him in your prayer life. So step one to getting out of the funk, to resetting yourself, to making sure that you're walking circumspectly, it's the beginning to talk to the Lord. Spend that time with him. Step two is spend time in his word. Romans 10, 17 says, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's a big deal. You're not in church. Churches are closed. This is something that I'm 35 that's never happened to me before. So you have to overfeed yourself. You've got to stuff yourself at home. Romans 12, 12 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and accepting and perfect will of God. Guys, just as important as you talking to God, you have to allow God to talk to you, and your social interaction is down. The only way for God to talk to you now is the, the Word of God. You have to get into it. 
How much time are you doing that? It's paramount. Step three is very simple. You spend time in the word, you spend time in prayer, then you just obey. Jesus says it very simply. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. What commandments would you say? Well, first, before we move on, let's make sure that step one is clear. You need to be a pro. You need to pray, you need to read, and you need to obey. And then step number two, so simple. Jesus says this he's in Matthew 22, 39. He says, and the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. That's the other golden rule. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. We know that to mean that the Bible hangs on this. Love the Lord, love your neighbor. So love is an action word to a Christian. Love is a verb. God is calling us to do something. So uh, go out and love on some folks. So I got a note here to be sure that I say that this may look different now. I don't know how, it, you know, usually for, for us, it's always eating and it's always hugging, but we might have to find different ways to do this so that um, we can still be fulfilling our call, our duty to the Lord. But, but I don't know, maybe you're offering toilet paper to somebody you don't know, or, or maybe you're going out and, and wiping something down for someone or have fun with it. But to be clear, you've got two different type of neighbors. You've got those who know Christ. And for those, remind them of who Christ is. Strengthen them, exhort them, encourage them. You got those who don't know Christ. My note here just says, go talk to your neighbors. I've had the experience recently where I've talked to my neighbors in the last three weeks more than I've probably talked to in the last three years. Shame on me, right? To, for for, for that, that I would only go out and and, and be nice and be loving to those who maybe are in a church building or maybe that I'm comfortable with. God says, love your neighbors. Literally, go love your neighbors. I, I think of uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor and Wilson hanging out at the privacy fence. I think that's acceptable right now. So go reach out and love, and love somebody. Corinthians says this, and I think this is important. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7, it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are diverse, diversities, differences of ministries, excuse me, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each for the profit of all. Guys, last time I checked, I still have the Holy Spirit. If I still have the Holy Spirit, then I still have gifts. If you still have gifts, then God wants you to use them. Don't hoard them in your house. God is still in control. Be encouraged. Have fun with it. Find different ways. If you've got gifts of help, find a way to help somebody. If you have the gifts of crafts, I know that's not in, might not be in the Bible, but make a craft and send it to someone. Make a phone call. Do something to get your mind off of yourself in the, in the situation and focus on the Lord and how he will want to help others, to love others. We are born of God. We are called to love because God is love. So, in summary, this is a devotion, right? Walk circumspectly. Cast your cares on the Lord. Figure out where you are right now and, and put that on Christ. Read, pray, and obey. Go love someone and be grateful that God called you for such a time as this, all right? This is not an accident. It's been allowed by the Lord and we need to be the light, the salt and light of the earth. So, God bless, God speed, and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing you guys and sharing a meal and hugging somebody soon. So let's pray for that.